If your business has any assets that need to be checked out or rented on a regular basis, then this video is for you. We're gonna be going step by step into how you can build a custom solution so that your customers can see what assets you have that are currently available on different dates and times coming up and then give them the ability to rent or purchase those assets ahead of time. So if that's of interest to you, stick around, let's get into it. Hi, my name is Gareth Pronovost and I am the owner of Gap Consulting, where we help businesses build custom solutions in Airtable and Zapier. Really what that means is we are helping businesses get organized and automated, resulting in a ton of time being saved and an amazing ROI for our customers. So if that's of interest to you, definitely click subscribe to this channel so you don't miss out on all the content that we're putting out on a regular basis. But without further ado, let's actually get into the good stuff here and jump into my screen. So what we've built here is a database, of course, in Airtable, and it's a pretty simple and straightforward one for tracking assets. And really we have three different, uh, three different main tables that are gonna be tracking all the different pieces of data for us. Uh, if you're new to Airtable, uh, a table is you know, essentially a tab up here, and this really functions as a data set. It is its, each table is its own data set. And so in this case, we have a set of assets. And so you see that we have four different assets, and if we were to expand these images, you would see that these assets are bounce houses. So we're imagining that we have a bounce house um, uh, rental company, and that we have these different bounce houses that can be rented from us. So we've got these four different ones, um, you know, random names to be sure, with different dimensions, a different daily rate per bounce house, etc. And moving on from there, of course, the second one is going to be the schedule. And these are all of the different dates that are available to rent the bounce houses. And you'll see that this table uh, links to the assets and it's currently grouped by date. So it's pretty easy to see that we have four different assets that are available on all of these different dates. Now, of course, a lot of these dates are in the past, uh, but uh, at least as of the time of this filming, but uh, we'll go ahead and, and ignore that for now. And then of course, we're also able to bring in that date, uh, excuse me, that daily rate. So we know because of each bounce, how each bounce house has its own rate. So we're able to access that as well. And then the third part that, or the third table, which is currently blank as it relates to the schedule is the orders. And this is where people are actually placing orders and we're going to track the order they placed and their information so that we can, of course, then uh, you know, follow up on those orders and make sure they get delivered and rented and paid for and all the things, right? So that is the setup here. Basic idea here is that we are going to give our customers a view of our different assets. Just like this, we can do that very easily inside of Airtable using the gallery view. And so from here, you know, we're pulling in all those different images and we can customize what information we're sharing here uh, as we would like. So you can drop into customized cards and of course, you know, bring in or get rid of some of these data points as, uh, as you would uh, any other data point in your data set. So from there, then the idea being that the customer gets a view of this and they can then go to the order page uh, where we have a form that is built for them that looks like this. And so, uh, and this is very click drag, very easy to use in Airtable. We can just move these fields around as so. And of course we've made many of them required or all of them required. And so then if we were to look at what that order form looked like, it's going to look just like this. This is uh, you know, a URL that we get from Airtable. And inside of here, this is where our customers could put in their information and reserve a specific uh, bounce house on a specific day. So if I were to drop back into the schedule, you'll see that we have these days as they pertain to the assets. And so each one of these is unique. So you can only rent Winterfell on 422 one time. It can only be ordered once before it's then removed. Now, Airtable has built a really cool way for us to take care of that by giving us this ability to create new views. And in this view, we apply a filter that says, hey, we wanna make sure that the order is empty. That is to say that no order has been placed on that specific date and asset combination, right? Once an asset or once an asset and date order is placed, so once this, once this is claimed, you know, Winterfell on 422, for example, once that's claimed and it's, it's assigned to an order, then it will disappear from this view. And the reason that this is so important is because 
on our form back in the orders table, our form has the ability to be limited to a specific view. And you'll see that we've limited the availability of these assets and days to that available view. So I realize this is a lot. So in plain English, what this means is on our available view, we only see assets and dates that do not have an order placed, which means that people can only place an order if that asset has not already been reserved on that particular day. And that's exactly what we want, right? We don't want people to double book asset and days. That would be a mess. So that's how we get that set up. And so ultimately then we have the, anyone would have the ability and let's suppose I were to put my own information in here and uh, put in my phone number and then drop in, I would have the ability to go for any of these assets. Now, in a perfect world, you would have a web page that has all of the different assets on one side and then the form on the other so that people can see and match. So if I were interested in a particular asset, I could type that in and now I see all of the days that Winterfell is available. Or alternatively, I could type in a day if I needed to find a particular date and now I see all of the different assets that are available. Now I keep using the word asset instead of bounce house. And the reason for that is bounce house is of course our example here, but you could do this for any number of assets in any number of businesses. So let's suppose I wanted to rent uh, Winterfell on 422. You'll notice that I could add multiple if I was having such a large party that I needed more than one bounce house, and then I can submit. And from here, that is all set. And you'll notice that if I were to go back into the database, that information that I just put in is now immediately updated. Now here's where we can build some automations that send out a text automatically, that send out an email automatically, that say, hey, thanks so much for your reservation, here's an invoice, or you know, please click here to pay, those types of things. So in a perfect world, you know, this would not be something that you're spending time doing yourself. All of this can be automated on the back end. So let's go ahead and, and look at one other part that becomes a little bit difficult. You'll notice that here we have the combination of both names, uh, or rather both assets and dates, right? And this is a very manual thing to have to create. Uh, ultimately, you would need to, let's suppose you were ready to, you know, uh, put up reservations for 5-1. You would need to come here, create a new record, change the date to 5-1, you know, quadruple this record, like so, grab the different assets that you have here, and copy them over here. Only after you've done that uh, would that asset then be available on the uh, reservation form. So if I go ahead and refresh this, you'll notice that I can now see asset reservations available for 5.1. But if I were to look for 5.2, of course we haven't yet created those, so nothing comes back for 5.2. Especially if I were to actually 5.2.2019, for example, there we go. So you'll see that that is not uh, available to me. Okay. So then the question becomes, well, how can we automate this? Because doing this manually, of course, is a bit ridiculous. So inside of Zapier, we've gone ahead and built a, a, a Zap for you here. This is a recurring event that's going to trigger every day on a particular time. So you can set this up to trigger on Saturdays and Sundays as well at midnight. That's how we've established this trigger. And a trigger, if you're new to Zapier, is really just that action or that thing that has to occur before an automation will start taking place. So once every day on, at midnight occurs, and this is of course relative to your time zone settings, but once that occurs, then we are going to take this date and let's suppose we create our schedule out a week in advance, seven days in advance. So here we are on April 28th. So seven days later would be of course, what, March, no, May, boy. Uh, showing my real intelligence here. Uh, it would be May 5th. Okay, great. So we're going to go ahead with May 5th and trust that Zapier can add seven to today's date. And beyond that, because clearly I can't. Uh, and then beyond that, we're going to start setting up these action steps. Now, quick pause here. For us, we only have four different assets, right? We have the four different bounce houses. So this is not a very difficult thing for us to create. However, if you have a large number of assets, you could actually uh, truncate this whole thing by using some JavaScript. Uh, in this case, I think that that would be uh, too much for this video. So instead, we're going to just build each one of these uh, different actions independently. So you'll see that what we're doing is we're saying, hey, we want to create a new record inside of the schedule table 
that if you remember is this table here. So we want to create a new record that meets these criteria. It applies to this date and it has this asset. And then we'll go down to the next step and apply the next one and the next one. So let's run these manually um, and to check them really quickly. So let's go ahead and start from the beginning. We're going to grab a date, continue. We'll then test this step, which I thought we had done already, but let's try it again. All right. Excellent. Continue from here. Now we'll go to our third step. This is where we're going to create that Winterfell asset combination. Let's see if that fires correctly. We got the green light up here, so that looks good. Come down here to last hearth, retest this step as well. Of course, I've already tested all of these, so there should be no trouble. That looks good as well. Let's go down to Casterly Rock, send that test. Got the green light again, and now Greywater Watch, retest this step, and send that test. All right, okay, green light, cool. So let's go back now into our database, and if we were to scroll all the way down, you'll see that we've now created uh, all of these records automatically seven days from today. So what this means is your asset schedule, that is the schedule where people can rent assets from you, would be updated seven days in advance at midnight every day. Pretty cool. And you can, of course, change that however you want so that you only really need to build this schedule at once and then it, continual, it continually perpetuates itself and, uh, and adds new days in the future as needed. So I realized that there was a little bit of going in the weeds there as we set that all up, but I hope that that was a super valuable thing for you and uh, to know that you can build all of this automatically and not have to then spend the rest of your time doing this over and over again. All right, as always, I hope you found that to be super helpful. If you did and you have some business questions that you'd like to run by us, definitely swing by our website. The link will be in the description and we offer up time so that we can hop on a call with you. You can book directly there and we can set something up that works for both of us. What we'll be discussing is building a solution for you that puts all of your data in one place and gives you a nice concise dashboard so that you know what's happening in your business at all times. Additionally, we will work on building custom bespoke automation for you so that you can eliminate the time that you spend on repetitive tasks and save countless hours every week. So if that's of interest, definitely swing by our website and check out the different offers that we have there.